So let's look at the calculation of partition functions. And uh, we've said that the partition function uh, gives us a way to calculate the number in a state i. And it's equal to n times by e to the minus the Boltzmann probability here, e i over k t, uh, divided by the partition function, right? And the partition function, the thing on the denominator, is just the sum of all those kind of Boltzmann probabilities. OK, so it's sort of a normalizing constant. And uh, if you ask yourself, uh, where does zero energy uh, come into this uh, on a regular energy diagram? Uh, maybe zero energy is here. And maybe you've got, um, you know, like for instance in the uh, harmonic oscillator, the lowest energy state actually has an energy that's non zero, right? It's got that half h nu there, that zero point energy. Um, so maybe the lowest energy is actually not zero. And you've got some state up here that's uh, e sub i. And uh, we can go ahead and show that actually you can kind of re-zero this. You can actually uh, subtract away that zero point energy from all your energies and measure with respect to there. And so uh, your energy up here, um, E sub i, is actually E sub i minus that grain state energy there. And we can clearly see that the difference between you know these two energy states is going to be exactly the same no matter where we set the uh, zero point to. And so the convention then in uh, statistical mechanics is to uh, when you calculate the partition function is to set the lowest energy state to zero. We can see actually why this must work mathematically. So if we measure our energies relative to E sub zero, then that would change the expression here, right? So it would be E to the minus E sub I minus the zero point energy over KT. And on the bottom, we would have the sum over all the states of E to the minus, again, E sub I minus the grain state energy over kt. And if we make use of properties of exponents, we know that e to the a plus b is the same thing as e to the a times by e to the b. So we can go ahead and we can write that expression as follows. So it is n times by e to the minus e sub i over kt uh, times by e to the, let me see, positive, so e sub 0 over kt, I believe. And uh, all that on the bottom then becomes the sum of e to the minus e sub i over kt uh, times by e to the e sub 0 over kt. And because we've got the same thing on top and bottom, we can show that they must cancel out. So it ends up being exactly the same expression, whether we uh, measure it with respect to the true energy or the, uh, the zero point energy. It really doesn't matter at all. So that means we can rewrite the energy of a quantum mechanical simple harmonic oscillator. And earlier, right, we derived an expression, we said the energy depends on a quantum number v, and it's equal to v plus one half times by h nu, where nu is the uh, exactly the same as the fundamental vibrational frequency you saw in physics, so one over two pi root k over mu. And uh, that gives you an energy diagram that looks something like this, and so we have equally spaced levels here at one half times h nu, uh, three halves, five halves, and seven halves and so on and so our first energy state is here and here and here and here and uh, we've gone ahead right and we've said well that's kind of annoying really let's just go ahead and set the energy levels a little bit different let's measure with respect to here so this would be zero so we're subtracting a half h nu off of the moles and then it's h nu and 2h nu and 3h nu this is much much easier right so our ladder basically looks something like that and so we can write the expression now uh, e nu is equal to nu uh, i'm sorry v times by h nu so a much easier expression here and all we've really done right is we've kind of zeroed out that zero point energy so we can calculate q, but uh, what does it mean? And maybe we shouldn't worry about what it means, but uh, there is a really nice physical meaning here, so I think it's worth bringing it up. So we basically said q is the sum over all the states of e to the minus e sub i, the energy of each state, over kt. And we kind of alluded to it's sort of just a normalization function. It just ensures when you add up the probability of, uh, of uh, all the different states, right, they all sum up to unity. By setting the lowest energy state a value of zero, we can see our first sum in our expression is going to be e to the minus zero. And no matter what the temperature is, I suppose that's going to be uh, e to the zero, which is one. And so uh, q is going to basically equal to one plus e to the minus the energy of the first state over kt, right, plus e to the minus the energy of the second state and uh, e to the minus the energy of the third state and uh, so on, right? So we've got that infinite sum there, or at least the sum over all the possible states of the molecule. We can go ahead and draw out an energy diagram here. We can draw out a ladder here. So we've set 
the uh, lowest energy to zero so that's going to be the bottom of our ladder here and uh, we've got all states you know ranging from uh, whatever it is zero one two three four to however many states there are in the system going up here and we can see that at absolute zero so at absolute zero our expression for q is going to be one plus uh, well, what do we have here? We've got zero here. It means that whatever we're dividing the energy by, when we divide it by zero, this is infinitely large. And uh, we flip the sign, so e to the minus infinity is essentially zero. So essentially, we've got a whole bunch of zeros going on here. And so this is telling us that at absolute zero, our partition function is one. And one way to understand this is that at absolute zero, the only state that has any population in is the grand state. If we go ahead and we do the sum for t approaching infinity, uh, and then we can say Q is equal to 1 plus, uh, well now if we have an infinitely large temperature here, uh, we're dividing something by a very large number, so this is going to approach 0. Uh, e to the minus 0 is the same as e to the positive 0, e to the 0 is 1. So basically each one of these terms here is going to be 1. So we basically just keep in adding up a bunch of 1's. And so that gives us, if you like, the number of states. And so uh, one way to rationalize this right is that at infinite temperature, every state is accessible. So our partition function is telling us, if you like, the number of states that are accessible at a temperature. So that's a very useful thing to know. So it's basically letting us know how many of these places uh, can we stash energy at a particular temperature. And when we're at absolute zero, we can only stash uh, on the lowest energy state here. But as we go to higher and higher temperature, more of these states are accessible. So we can start to store more and more energy in these states. We've assumed that our grand state has a degeneracy of one, but if it uh, has a degeneracy of two or three, then clearly when we do our sum, we're gonna get uh, a two or a three here for our partition function. So Q is essentially the same thing as uh, the degeneracy of our grand state at absolute zero. So most of the time our grand state has a, a single quantum state and so it'll be singly degenerate so the uh, partition function will be one but if it's not you know if you've got say an unpaired electron and it's got two possibilities an upspin and a downspin with the same energy then it's got two accessible states and so at absolute zero the partition function should be two imagine we've got uh, electronic states here and we know that the gap in energy between electronic states might be on the order of 10 to the 5 wave numbers so we might expect that at room temperature right then essentially everything's going to be down in this grain state here and uh, I mean it's not you know uh, impossible for a molecule to be in an excited state but what we find is that there's just not enough thermal energy to really have a high probability of being up here so in this situation here with a very large energy gap between the different states, we would expect our partition function to essentially be one if we've got a singly degenerate grand state here. However, if we've got molecules with closely spaced energy levels, so for instance, rotational levels have a very small spacing uh, between them and uh, make it look something like that, let's say, we might expect that at room temperature, right, uh, a lot of these states have a significant uh, possibility of uh, being accessed. So we might expect Q, uh, to be some kind of measure of the number of accessible states here. So again, Q should be a measure of the number of accessible states. Okay, and so we can see here we've got uh, essentially, you know, one, two, three, four, five. So I um, mean, there's not a high probability of being up here. So Q is going to be bigger than one. But uh, if it were, say, two and a half, it would just say on average two and a half of these states are completely accessible and full at whatever temperature you calculated at.